We have a problem. I'm gonna have to make a drastic change on this van build. Welcome back to another episode of this van transformation. Today, I'm going to be converting our panel van into a legal camper van here in New South Wales. So there is a whole bunch of great benefits you will get when you convert your motorhome that you converted from a panel van into a legal motorhome. I'll get into that a bit later on. So the first thing we need to do is take the new tear weight of the vehicle or the weight of the vehicle with the permanent fixtures only inside. So that means we take out all our clothes, our toys, and it also means we empty the water tanks and the fuel tanks to pretty much bare minimum. Then we go take the van over a weigh bridge and that'll give us the new tear weight. So we'll really want that weight to be as low as possible and give us that maximum amount of carrying capacity from the GVM weight, which is gross vehicle mass weight of the three and a half ton. The lighter it is tear weight, the more we can carry. So, so we know we haven't made the lightest van, we've made it very homely, but we know that we haven't made it over capacity. So we're pretty confident that it's gonna be fairly low, but it's gonna give us enough to carry all our toys. So the first thing I need to do now is pretty much remove everything from the van that isn't fixed. And then also, cause I stupidly filled up the fuel tank the other day, forgetting that I was gonna be doing this, I'm gonna have to try and siphon out the fuel. And this thing carries a hundred liters. I think there's about 70 liters in there at the moment, but it was pretty silly of me so now I'm just gonna have to siphon it out. The main reason we decided to get the van certified was for insurance purposes but with all the hard work, materials, labour and appliances put into this van we wanted to make sure we can insure it for the new true value and also to give us peace of mind as this is going to be our new home and we want it to be covered in case the unthinkable was to happen. Okay, so now I'm going to attempt to siphon all the fuel out of the tank and then I'll probably put back about 10 litres so it just gets me to the weigh station and back. I've got the van facing downhill, my buckets are lower than the tank. If I remember my science, this should work. That's not good. <laughs> ah! After having a really good head scratch about how I'm actually going to siphon this tank, with the anti-siphoning device. I remember that I actually installed a fuel pump and pumped it into the fuel tank uh, with the diesel heater. So I've just disconnected the diesel heater line and primed it with the pump. And now I'm just siphoning it into the buckets. Coming out real freaking slow. So it's probably gonna take a couple of hours to siphon the tank, but at least it's coming out. <laughs> We have a problem. And this problem has been bugging me for months, nearly after I started building the van. And it's really just come to fruition that I'm gonna have to make a drastic change on this van build. Problem lies with the seats up the front here. So I really wanted a access point from the front to the back. So that's why I built the van the way I did with that walkway through the middle. And to do that, I would have to have changed the double seat here to a single seat. But in Australia, these vans only come with a double seat unless you buy them brand new when you can select to get a optional extra of a single seat. I've called Ford, I've tried to get them to give me a single seat, but they don't supply them, they only do them when new. So when I first started to build this van, I was a little bit more naive and I thought I could just get a single driver's seat and put it in the passenger side, but the legalities around that is with the side airbag of the seats. Because these are newer vans, they have side airbags. So while we've been driving around in this for a little bit, we've had the airbag disconnected, which now I've realized probably wasn't the right thing to do. There is no legal way to change this airbag onto the correct side. So I've also tried to get a seat from say America where they would have a single passenger seat which would actually be their driver's seat. I could get that shipped over but to get this van certified as a camper van I would need to take it to an engineering mechanic who would look over the van and certify it again for two seats rather than three. And no one I've spoken to will say they will do that unless they have a letter from Ford saying that the seat and the airbag is of Australian standards, which after I've contacted Ford, 
said they will never do that. The only way we can really go now is to put the double seat back into the van and I've got a little idea of how I'm going to make that little walkway wider. So we're still going to keep the fit out of the van. I still like the way it works. I'm going to have a little bit more trouble getting through the gap than say Vendi because she's a lot smaller than me. But it's really the only option we have right now. We're taking this van to the certifier in a couple of days so we need to take this seat out, put the other one back in again. We never sold it, thankfully. It's just a quick swap, but it's a little bit disappointing. I think the next van we do, we're gonna have to think about the design a lot better and make sure everything is legal before we start building the van. So anyway, shit happens. The one good thing about this is we'll get the heated seat back because the heated seat connections were different for the double and the single seat. And I was too scared to hook it up because I was scared I was gonna hit the airbag, so. Anyway. And that's a big yay for Wendy. Okay, disaster averted. The double seat is back in, but we had a massive oak moment when we thought that this wall when I built it was too far forward and the seat wasn't gonna fit. And things just started going through our head like we were gonna have to cut the wall down and redesign the whole van. So luckily it actually fit in. There's a little gap there too. I can actually squeeze now through still because I have temporarily removed the armrest which I'm pretty sure isn't a safety feature, it's more of a comfort feature. Yeah, I took the clip out of there, so it actually slots in and out still when we want to use it, but it gives me a shitload more legroom when I want to go through. Still happy with the design. Disaster averted. So happy that I'm still able to make it through. Now we've got an extra seat actually, so we can pick up a hitchhiker if you want. <laughs> <laughs> or we've got some friends. Um, friend. Okay, so I'm off to the way station now. You can see it's a pretty bare bones, empty van. Ah, uh, yeah, to get it converted to a camper van. Right, so it's empty, yeah? Yeah, yeah, it's empty. Yep, alright, so you gotta hop out for me. Okay. Here? Yep, alright, I've got it. You can hop back in now, turn around, and then just come and park back in front of my window. It's gotta do a U turn, so the weight's been had, and now I just gotta go pay. See how much it weighs. Okay, so I should probably actually tell you where I am. So if you Google public way station, you should be able to find some in your area. This is actually a tip which has a licensed way station in it, so they're legally allowed to provide tear weights. And my vehicle has come back at 3.00 ton. The tear weight of this vehicle was 2,200 kilograms. That means I've put 750 kilos. So that means we've still got about 500 kilos to spare, which is good. So the next step now is in a couple of days, we're gonna go see the engineer who is going to give us a certificate for the conversion from a panel van to a camper van. It's another day. We are now at the engineering certificate center. So this is a company called RV Go in Sydney who I think build camper vans or caravans, but they also certify uh, caravans as well because they have a auto engineer. He's gonna look over the van now and hopefully we don't have anything that we have to fix or do. Because this process is a little bit, you know, under documented, I couldn't find a lot of stuff online about exactly what I have to do. I think I might need a sticker on the gas box that says it's got a funnel liquid inside but I couldn't find where I could get one of those either so he might have one hopefully that's all I have to do <sighs> so we have a, a very small list of things we have to get done before he will certify it off I have to go chase up the electrician and the gas fitter who fitted the gas and make sure he gives me this compliance plate which he didn't give me the electrician, I just need some paperwork signed that he did the electrical work. We need a smoke alarm, which we didn't know we needed. I just need to move the fire extinguisher from under the cupboard to somewhere accessible. So we're gonna put it behind the seat here so you can grab it a lot easier if there is an emergency. And that's it, pay the man his money. <laughs> so the certificate costs 
$880. I think $170 of that is his time, so him doing the inspection, and then the $710 of it is the rest. I think that goes to or whoever runs the certificate whatever so it's not not required that we need a smoke alarm yeah. but he said well, he made it compulsory yeah. he made it compulsory <laughs> himself yeah now we're going to go chase this stuff up around where we'll we able to get this by today so we'll come back tomorrow it's the next day We've come back, we've got everything we needed. We got the rego papers he required. We moved the fire extinguisher to an accessible spot. We've got our gas compliance plate. So this is something the plumber had to supply me with. And I've got an electrical certificate from my electrician who hooked up my inverter and 240 volt stuff. I'll put a little screenshot of it here. It's a little green form. Now we're back at the engineer. So hopefully he's gonna sign it off and say everything's sweet. So apparently the gas compliance plate has to be in the gas box or that's where he prefers it to be. Yes, okay, we've got our certificate now. So it's all been done, we've paid for it. Everything is now legal and certified to be Yay. converted into a camper van. He's gonna send us the certificate in the next day or two, and then we go to the government certifying office, which is just called Service New South Wales here, and then we transfer the registration over. Then we will call our insurance company. We're a little bit nervous uh, when he was just like uh, going around and checking our stuff and then asking who did this and who done this. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, it all worked out, so we're really stoked. Okay, so the next step now is I'm going to the Service New South Wales. Okay, so that went pretty smoothly. All I did was just show him my registration papers and my license and the engineering certificate. And all they did was just print me a new registration paper with the modification certificate on there. And I think that's it. All right, so the last thing we did was change over our insurance for the van. Originally, when we bought this van, we just insured it with a general motor insurer, pretty much the cheapest one we could find. It worked out to be about $1,000 for full comprehensive because we knew we weren't really going to be driving very far because we were going to be building the van. So now that we've got the engineering certificate, we called up uh, the company that we went with. It's called CIL, and they were able to insure the van for an agreed value. So we came up with a price for what we wanted to insure it for. We sent them a couple of photos which they agreed to the price and then they sent us a quote. That quote and what we paid for our insurance now is pretty much the exact same as what we paid for the first one but the van is now insured for double what it was before plus we included seven thousand dollars of additional excess for our computers laptops drones all that kind of expensive stuff that you would normally get insured i will be making a video in the future about the total cost breakdown of the build the van insurance everything will be in that video so stay tuned for that Subscribe so you don't miss any of the updates coming up. Remember to smash that thumbs up button if you got any use out of this video at all. It'll really help us out and we'll see you next time.